Hello everybody, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis. I've got the next part of my 40k Tactics series today. I'm going to talk about a denomination of the vehicles category. I'm going to talk about walkers. Walkers are a hybrid, really, between vehicles and infantry. So they are similar to vehicles in terms of profile, but they also have elements of the infantry profile as well. So a walker profile will contain a weapon skill, a ballistic skill, and a strength value, an initiative value and a tax value, like an infantry model. But instead of a toughness and wounds and save value, it will contain front side and rear armour and hull points, meaning that, as I say, it's a hybrid. Usually it can pack a variety of weapons, be it anti-infantry, anti-tank, um, or pack some very powerful melee weapons. Uh, there are two, maybe three categories of walkers. There are the support walkers, there are the wrecking ball walkers, as I like to know them, and then there are your all-rounders. The support walkers are those like sentinels for the Imperial Guard, war walkers, all those sorts of walkers. These are the ones who will not go in and wreck everything. They're not the strongest, obviously, they're usually only armor 10, maybe 11, um, but they can pack a variety of powerful weaponry. For example, the Eldar war walker can pack a bright lance, it can pack a star cannon, I believe. The Imperial Guard sentinel can pack las cannons, the armor version can pack plasma cannons, meaning they can perform a variety of tasks for you. And often they have some sort of ability to help them using move through cover, outflank, scout, whatever it may be that puts them in a good position to do what they need to do. So commonly support walkers will not be deployed with your battle line if possible. They will either come on from the side and attack the vehicles that are on that side or that side depending on your outflank roles. Or they will be used as a harassment unit. If they are forced to deploy with your battle line, use them as distraction units. Um, use them to... Go after units that perhaps your tanks can't target or your infantry can't target, but maybe they can. On the other side of that, we have the Wrecking Balls. These ones generally sacrifice a majority of their shooting, but can go and wreck everything in melee. Uh, the Ironclad Dreadnought is a good example of this. Uh, I suppose the Chaos Space, I mean Hellbrute perhaps. Um, I'm tempted to say the Soul Grinder and Defiler, but I'm not so sure because these guys are bordering on all rounders. Um, because a, a pure wrecking ball is weak on guns. Generally, it might pack one gun. Um, usually, if it's the ironclad, it's a melter and a flamer. Yes, a hellbrute packs a multi-melter basic, but with the rules that go with the hellbrute, I don't know quite if it falls into the all-rounder category because it's not that good at shooting. Anyway, the point of a wrecking ball walker is to get up, if this is your enemy's line, is to get up and wreck it, basically smash into things it can kill, it will usually pack a power fist, or as we used to know, the Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons, which didn't drop your initiative, I'm slightly annoyed that they changed that rule, um, and they will destroy whatever they can, generally they'll go after vehicles, because Dreadnought Close Combat Weapons and Power Fists are designed to do that, um, or they will go after mass infantry where they can strike with near impunity, although you may have to bear in mind the, I believe it's called our weapons are useless rule, which means they can disengage from the walker. Um, in terms of combat resolution with walkers, I should probably point this out while I'm on Wrecking Balls. Every glancing hit counts as one for calculating combat result, and every penetrating hit counts as two. So let's say if I'm using a Dreadnought, and it gets in melee, and it causes two wounds, and I am penetrated by a power fist in the squad, that's two against, so the combat is drawn. And that's how the system works. Obviously, if you lose, there are no ill effects for your walker because it does not have a leadership value or anything else. It just loses the whole points like any other tank. However, it cannot disengage, but it is able to sweep in advance, I believe. Um, some are built, obviously, to kill tanks in the Wrecking Ball sector, for example, the Ironclad, but some are built to kill infantry. One of them is in the Blood Angels. They have a Death Company Dreadnought. This guy swaps all the usual stuff for regular Dreadnoughts, such as um, Blood Fist for Blood Talons, which are, in essence, Dreadnought-sized Lightning Claws, which can cause extra attacks for all unsaved wounds caught, so it's pretty lethal. So, you can see why we call them Wrecking Balls, because they go in, that's your enemy line. Dent, smack, beware obviously of anti-vehicle weapons as you go in, beware of haywire grenades or similar melter bombs in melee, and try and find a delivery system for them. Obviously, Space Marines have the ultimate answer in the Storm Raven gunship and drop pod. If there are other ways that you can protect your walkers from getting into the lines, Chaos Mauler Fiends, for example, have the Siege Crow Bulls, can move quickly. Um, Death Company, obviously, Dreadnoughts can go in Storm Ravens. Um, and all these things, try and find a delivery system for them because if they're just left to waddle up, 
they'll get popped halfway there because your opponent will realise. Then we come to the jack of all trades, the all rounder. These guys are probably the most common walker, actually, oddly enough. Um, they include dreadnoughts, um, defilers, soul grinders, I think. Um, and they are the types of walkers that can do a bit of both. So usually they'll pack a strong gun, for example, the defiler packs a battle cannon, the soul grinder can pack a more cannon, uh, the dreadnought can pack every heavy weapon under the sun. And usually they will pack some sort of melee as well. For example, the Defiler can take um, all Dreadnought can come up with some power fists, so can the Dreadnought, etc. And they can all do these jobs. So yes, they won't cause as much carnage of melee as their Wrecking Ball brethren, but they can come in and start peppering away at the line before they hit it, which means that they are very adaptable. Obviously, they they obviously will do what a support Dreadnought or what support walker does, i.e. harass and kill tanks, but with a bit more impunity. Most come in armor 12, armor 13, so are a little bit safer from small arms fire. Obviously, there are some cases such as venerable, it will not die, these sorts of things are available to you in some cases. So don't think that you have to scope with your dreadnought or whatever. You can afford to walk it up because it can do its shooting and probably pace some of its points back and be a good distraction. If a wrecking ball walker doesn't hit melee, waste of points. If a support walker gets shot down before it can do anything, waste of points. Which is why an all-rounder can probably get away with it. Of course, still look for delivery systems if you're going to melee base it. You can make them more shooting based, but it's up to you. Um, there are those that look like walkers, but aren't walkers. For example, the um, new releases of monstrous creatures in Eldar and Tau, perhaps you could class them as big walkers or super heavy walkers, but they, obviously they come as monstrous creatures due to their size. So sometimes if you see your opponent put a big unit down on the table that's on walking, you make sure to just check, is it a walker, is it a monstrous creature, and so how can I kill it? In terms of tackling walkers, because sometimes having a tank that can shoot you and assault you can be quite intimidating. So you have to be aware of how to deal with them. Obviously, anti-tank weapons work on walkers because walkers are vehicles and vehicles die to anti-vehicle weapons. That's the whole idea of them. Um, if you're facing a support walker, try and use your smaller arms because generally they'll be okay at killing it. Um, if you've got anti-cover weapons, these are quite good because generally they'll be trying to hide to get their shots off. Um, with the wrecking ball, obviously you need to divert your heavy weapons at them and make them explode and wreck to whatever before they can get to you because if they can get to you they will wreck holes in whatever they hit. Um, you can blob them unless they are something like Death Company Dreadnought which has a lot of attacks and can cause more wounds but generally things like Ironclads you can blob them down they're only killing two or three particularly fearless just like Gaunt, High strength, high Squad Number or Boys, um, Guard with the Commissar are very good at blobbing and holding them up. You can apply the blobbing thing again to the all-rounder walker um, but bear in mind that this one will be shooting you as you come and sometimes can be upgraded to be totally anti-infantry. For example, some dreadnoughts can take a uh, missile launcher and assault cannon. Um, so d it's not foolproof in this case. Um, so again, divert your heavy weapons at the walkers, but don't obviously neglect your opponent's tanks and monstrous creatures if applicable because they will be just as deadly. Um, and if you know they have a delivery system, for example, they're shielding them, uh, with psychic powers or they're putting them in a transport try and cripple the support so if a librarian or sorcerer is casting something that's giving them a cover or an invulnerable save target him he'll go down cover saves gone you're easier at targeting dreadnought or whatever um, if you know that there is a flyer coming and that or your opponent likes to put their dreadnought in a flyer uh, say, I, I'm going to run an Icarus Laz Cannon, which can intercept in Skyfire, <laughs> shoots it, Dreadnought takes a strength 10 hit, comes down, probably in trouble. And it's even if it survives, it's stranded at the other end of the line where you can pick it off with ease. Um, that's all there is really for walkers. Um, bear in mind, when fighting walkers, they generally have an okay weapon skill, and you have to roll against weapon skill, only when they're stunned or immobilised. Generally, you're hitting them on sixes with grenades. So, melter bombs only hit on sixes unless you've already immobilised or stunned the walker. Then you roll for weapon skill. It's normal. So, bear that in mind just in case you go in and think, oh, I'll just stick it with the melter bomb, it'll be fine. Because I've got a high weapon skill. Not much good, because a walker will obviously be moving around a lot. And you always resolve melee hits against the front armour. So, don't think, okay, I've got strength four guys, this thing's rear armour ten, 
I'll run in, I'll kill it. Unless you've, again, stunned or immobilised it, you won't do that. Um, that's all for today. Uh, this video will probably be going up Tuesday. Um, be sure to keep checking out the playlist for more 40k tactics. Um, so, be sure to like the video. Any opinions about walkers or 40k in general? Is there anything you want me to have a look at, analyse? Because I'm not... Well, I, I don't know everything, but I can try and have a crack at everything, see if I can help you guys out. That's what the whole point of this channel is, is to try and help you guys tactically, um, hence the name. So, be sure to let me know what you guys want me to have a look at. For example, I know I'm going to do Psychers later this week. Um, I'll probably do a Flyer Tactica at some point, but if there's anything else you want me to do, please let me know, and I'll take a look at it when I get the time. Um, I should be starting another Codex Analysis this week, provided I get the stuff I'm expecting to get. I'm expecting to get a copy of the Dark Eldar and Dark Angels this week, I hope, and then I can take a look at at least one of those. That should bring me to the end of April, probably, the speed I'm analysing Codexes these days. Um, thank you for watching again. My name is Michael. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Uh, I'll see you again.